understand you have a cookbook. <laughs> I, did. I did. Growing Toast up, Toast of family and friends. Mm -hmm. I'm growing up in a, on a home, southern home, where there's lots of cooking, and my grandmother's the best baker this side of the Mississippi. She really is. Learned a lot of good techniques. So my love for cooking. I wanted to share that somehow with others, and uh, I was working with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, have been for many years. My niece was diagnosed when she was little. She's great now. She's in remission. She's got her own. She's fine. She's wonderful, normal. Um, I, years ago, wanted to help give back, and I thought, if I combine my passion for giving back to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and my love for cooking, I thought, yeah, but it's a cookbook. Boring. Hmm. But what if every single recipe had a connection to cancer? So I sent out a letter to anybody I could think of that, that knew something about cooking or have a connection to cancer, and I said, listen, I need your help. I want you to send me one recipe that either is special to you because someone you lost because of cancer, is special to you because it's your daughter's favorite meal that she likes to eat when she's on prednisone because nothing else tastes good, I want you to send me a recipe that reminds you of a mother who passed away without cancer, no relation, but was a good woman. You know, give me good people, connections to cancer, and give me a story, okay? And I want you to send me a picture of the person that maybe you're memorializing with your recipe and your story. Every, in the cookbook, every page comes with a recipe and a story and a picture so that every time you bake that, ba that, that item or cook that recipe, you will think of the story and the picture of that person that you help by giving your money. Many, many people, they say, oh, well, I'd like to do a cookbook. And they say, oh, well, I can't do a All cookbook because I can't do that. I can't. <laughs> Yeah, you, just you say, know, I'm you, gonna do a it is a book. big project, but it, even just like with the 180, it didn't happen in a week. It didn't happen in a week. It not. takes one step at a time. It's just like going home and, and doing your laundry. Don't we all have those big, huge piles of laundry? Oh my God, I've got to do that laundry. I don't want to do it. But if you separate it and put a little pile here and a little pile here, you can do it all at once. And next thing you know, it's gone. One pile at a time. That's it. One pile. But think of how great how much more that I can do now because I'm kind of free from the anchor desk, so I have more time. And that's kind of what I'm doing with the company, doing a lot of community relations. So how can I get this company who loves to sponsor community events with all these good events that are going on? Well, I know the people who put on those events because I either interviewed them on the air, or I went and did a story with them, or I've worked with them in some capacity. So if I can merge those worlds together, what greater things could Bright House do? How much more could we give back in the community? You know, it's all about you, the customer. It is a lot, it's a tagline for us, but it's, it is, it's so true. And that's why I chose to stay with the company. I saw what they are doing in the community, but where they stalled out, where they couldn't get further. But if I could bring my knowledge here and my contacts and my little Rolodex and come to this side of the world, corporate, think of the things we can do. So right to today, mm -hmm. not what you're gonna do later, but up to today, what what are what if you had to pick one thing mm -hmm. only one? Mm -hmm. What are you most proud of? Setting a good example. You've done that. If I can do it, why can't anybody else? But they don't know that I'm just a normal person because all they see is, ooh, she's somebody on TV. But when they see that I'm just real and normal, maybe they might go, okay, why can't I do it? Why can't I reach out and help somebody else? So I think just finally getting a chance to be myself. That makes me proud. And getting people to listen. People to listen. If I say something because they've trusted me for 10 years, if a hurricane's coming through, and if I say, duck and cover, it's coming, they duck and they cover. I had a woman once email me and she said, you'll never know what your voice meant to me in a closet with my two children and a weather radio. It's all I had was your voice. She listened, and it was really important for her. And I knew at that point in my career, and that was during uh, Hurricane George out in Polk County, and I didn't save her life, but it made her feel better. So being a good example, giving people a sense of calm, showing them how to do things, leading their hand, just being a good example. Yeah. And a darn good person, period. It's thanks to my mom. <laughs> I got my mama's sweetness and my daddy's stubbornness. So I do okay. get my buttons to get pushed sometimes. I get a little stubborn. But.
You don't get where you've gotten in your life without having Mm -hmm. some moxie. Yeah, some Mm -hmm. moxie is right. (laughs) And if I have a quote that I love to share with people, mastering others is strength. Teaching others what to do. Mastering other people, that's strength. You can do it. I can do it. Mastering yourself, that's a true power. If you can master yourself, A lot of people can control groups, but controlling yourself, it's not always easy. It's got to control what's in your heart. And if you're at peace in your heart, that peace will resound and it goes out to the people around you. And that's how you touch others. You control this. Mastering others is strength, sure. It takes a good, strong person to get on stage and control people or be in life and control a company. But mastering that and letting that flow out is the true power. When I started my first motto, I'll never forget my Sunday school teacher, Miss Martha. She was a local seamstress, good, sweet country lady. And my mom at the time owned a little fabric store in town because she liked to sew. Martha would come in and get fabric. And she was at our church, so I knew her well, knew her children. And I heard that Martha had a stroke. It was so sad for her. Well, she came back, and she was fine. And I went to see her. She was going to hem my prom dress. My mom didn't have time. Whatever the reason, I went to see her. In her face. She had no control of her face. And she said, don't feel sorry for me. Don't at all. She said, you just remember one thing. There's a reason for this. I want you, when you leave this house today, to trust in God. Believe in yourself. And after that, you dare to dream. Help me. Can you trust in God, believe in her heart, and dare to dream? And she said, Jen, you've got what it takes. Just do those things. So many many good women have shaped my life. So many. But I can't let it stop here. Yeah. If I let it stop here, it's worth nothing. Right. But they've given me gifts that now I can share. Absolutely. And through my job that I've had in my past, I have the ability to share because people trust what I say. Yes. But it makes me walk a fine line, boy, because I better not tell them anything wrong. I better not lie. (laughs) 